This video explains. Well, it doesn't explain. You see in this video. You see in the video what is happening in a proceeding. I, I don't think you can learn it in a university with a degree because they don't explain it or teach you in the context or framework or in an intellectual capacity that when you're in law acting as a lawyer or a solicitor or a crown prosecutor, you aren't critical. Crown prosecutors don't criticise the legal process. They criticise if people are following the legal process. If a crown prosecutor catches someone breaking a procedure rule, like a defence lawyer or whatever, they might call it out. If they're breaking it, obviously they're not going to call it out um, if they're not following it because they might want to try and, um, you know, get away with breaking the rules. Watch what happens here. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all the witnesses for being here. Uh, Dr. Woolen, if I could start with you. You served as the chief... Right. He, they've got proceedings in Congress. They have proceedings in Congress. Rand Paul has been doing proceedings in Congress, questioning the Attorney General. I will go to that video now. But he just said, um, welcome to the witnesses, right? So I've been hard on members here to say... Senator Hall, Senator Hall you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Right, th that's, that is it there. That, that is pretty much it. Right. Secretary, let's just come back to... Senator Hawley. Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh right. Senator Hawley is recognized for his questions, right? Now, did Senator Hawley have to prove to a jury by giving evidence whether or not he is Senator Hawley or not. He didn't have to prove it. Did they ask him for ID? Right? He was recognised for his questions. Right? I won't play it again. Senator Hawley. Senator Hawley, you're recognised for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, right. Uh, Mr Secretary. He's recognised for his questions. Right? He's recognised by the court by the Senate, recognised by the Senate, that is, in able to speak, he has to be recognised. Did, did they, in the criminal procedure rules, under the overriding objectives, it is recognising the rights of the defendant. The process of recognising, the procedure for recognising and applying the right, okay, is the, the same as recognising who you are. Senator Hall, Senator Hall, you're recognised for your questions. Thank you. Right, recognised. Guilt or innocence is proved. It's proved based on the evidence by a jury and they have a verdict of a case that's made, right? Did a person do or did not do certain things or did they break a law or did they perform certain actions and then the jury can decide on their conscience? That is to be proved. The case is to be proved proved through the proceedings and decided on after evidence given by persons. Those persons, they're not there to prove who those persons are, but those persons are recognised. When you turn up at a court, it could be anyone, right? 
you you don't actually have to prove it beyond reasonable doubt that it's actually even you. When you go to a court, you've got a date and a letter, right? And when you get there, I've never once been asked for ID, identity, right? Big Brother Watch might be interested in this. I've never once shown ID in a court that you go sit down, they call your name, and they say, is this you? And you say yes, and they recognise it's you. You don't have to get ID out or fingerprints to actually prove that it was you who turned up on the day of the court of your trial, and the jury say, yes, we believe that this is him, right? You're recognised because you turn up as you, representing you, and you're recognised that it's you, but you don't prove it. You're never challenged to prove that you are who you are, even on a, even in a magistrate's court. Even in a magistrate's court. I have never, in a magistrate's court, proved who I am with evidence. Only on oath. When you go up to... In, in, you don't always actually give evidence. Sometimes you don't get to. When I go up to the stand and they say... Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? You're, you're swearing an oath to give evidence as you that it is you, but they recognise it. You don't... It, 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 what proof have they got? Usually, um, for example, if it's a speeding offence, they don't have a picture of your face or fingerprints. They just say that, you know, your licence plate number, right? There's no evidence required to prove that it's you there, right? This is what um, they're going on with um, Big Brother Watch now, with all the facial recognition. You, you, It's purely based on you, your oath. This is me. I, I, I solemnly do swear that this is me. And that is when you actually go up to give evidence, not when you turn up and sit there uh, and through the rest of it. That's only when you go up on the, the stand, right? They recognise you because you are turning up and you are saying, I, I am here and this is me, right? You're recognised. The jury do not decide whether or not you are in the court and you are who you say you are. All of the evidence that the prosecutor puts out is that this or that was done or that, that, that you know, did you do this or that based on that you agree. It's very easy to get someone to give a statement or, or agree and prosecute someone on it. We're very, very... The Crown Prosecutor would love it if everyone confessed based purely on their oath. In fact, if you enter a plea of... Guilty, you don't even get to an you don't even enter a defence uh, and have a trial because in a crown court you go to sentencing because you um, confess to the crime, right? And um, you're saying that it's you, right? And you won't even face a jury. I don't think that you you go in front of the jury if you um, plead guilty because you go to sentencing with the judge if you plead guilty, right? So you don't even get a jury to decide whether you're you or not. It purely that you say you are you on your oath, and you say you did the crime, um, you go to be sentenced by the, the judge, right? Now, in the... These people recognise the other person's in this room here, right? Because they turn up, whether they know them or don't know them, they're turning up and saying that they're this person. Most of these person are well-known people, but it's purely on the fact that they say who they are and they're representing themselves as who they claim they're being, right? Senator Hall, Senator Hall you recognise for your questions. Thank you very much. Right. In the criminal procedure rules, when you are claiming a right, or when you have a right, or where there's a right to be recognised, the the overriding objective requires the right to be recognised, not proved, because you only prove something in a trial, in front of a jury or a magistrate to make a case to them that certain facts or actions or law is 
uh, correct or, or that you did or didn't do something and then the jury will decide. They never decide you are who you say you are. It's taken, if you make the oath that you are who you say you are, then it's granted, right? It's granted and recognised by the court. Never proved. You never have to get a passport out or a birth certificate or anything like that. You, you, you are recognised by the court. You don't prove who you are, right? And if you're getting sentenced and they're putting you in prison, they prove that you broke the law, right? They prove that you broke the law of England and that you did certain actions, but who, who did it? You, only on the basis that you swore an oath that, that you are you, in, in the similar way as if you would, really in a similar way that if you would have pleaded not guilty, right? If you plead not, uh, sorry, if you plead guilty, right? You go into a court and you say, I'm me, they recognise it, okay? And when you enter a plea that is guilty, if, if you enter a guilty plea, right, you're, you're ad confessing, admitting, right, and they, that is your conscience that is your oath your state uh, your your you know the judge then will sentence but you he's not proven that you are guilty or not it's not proved by a court by a trial only if you say you're not guilty the prosecutor must try to prove your guilt or you try to prove your innocence to a court through legal proceedings of giving evidence, asking questions, calling witnesses um, based on the evidence that is presented to the court, right? You don't prove a right. You don't prove a right. A right is recognised just, just like really when they recognise you, when they recognise you. Because you don't prove who you are. You give an oath to who you are. You give an oath, I'm me, right? You don't have to actually prove it. Um, may maybe if there's something odd, you know, when you get fingerprinted or the police, um, you know, pull you up and say, oh, we don't think the person we put in prison is this person. We put the wrong person in, you know. Um, it doesn't fit, you know, previous photos and they investigate it. And then that person... Uh, was committing a fraud, impersonating another person that's not you, right? And that's another offence. But only because they had to investigate it and find out. But they, they don't actually prove in a court of law that it's you to a jury. If you, if you were impersonating someone else and committing another offence when it's not, you could be prosecuted for, for that. But, but I can guarantee you... No, you know, I've been in court quite a few times, you know, for, for you know, usually, you know, driving offences or whatever, uh, actually once it was not wearing a seatbelt. I never had to, when I go into that court, I didn't have to prove who I was to a jury or magistrate. I had to either prove that I was innocent of a crime and I don't think I've ever pleaded guilty. I might have on one occasion. Uh, you can give mitigating circumstances, but at the moment you actually, this the plea is actually the key. The plea is, it is an oath actually. It, it, the plea is 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 really an oath. It, like in church when you have a confession. Now the right is something that. You you know, I had to put a skeleton argument out for my right and I shouldn't have had to have done. No, it, it, rights are meant to be already known and understood. Laws are meant to be known and understood and acknowledged. Um, sometimes they try to prove extent of laws, but this is the thing. If you're ill in a courtroom or, or, or be sick, um, 
the, the jury. Don't you're not proving to the jury if you're in a courtroom, right? And you you're you 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 you, you know you're you're sick. You, you you puke right on the floor, right? It's recognised that the you know defendant is ill or needs you know to go to the bathroom or something that that you don't. It's not evidence in the trial against you that anything to do with whether you're guilty or not. It, it, it's a right that is invoked, although you are sick in that trial and as part of it, it it's recognised that you're sick and everyone looks over and can see it and they ask you if you want to you know, go to the toilet or if you need an ambulance or whatever. Um, do, do they get, um, you know, they might call a doctor in to, to check you out, but the jury... Um, don't definitely don't decide whether you're sick or not, and the jury aren't there to decide if you're ill or not. Um, they're going to decide th this charge. When, when you have a right in effect which applies to your body or person, like if you're sick, medical right, you aren't proving that right. Everyone in the courtroom knows the right or knows that there is some kind of right, even if they don't know the exact letter or wording of the law of how the right applies and invoking it and so forth to the exact letter, they, people know of it. Most of them do know about rights. Um, usually, if, 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 there's a, if there's a fire in the court building, right, I think an alarm bell rung halfway through the Stonehenge trial. An alarm bell rang halfway through the Stonehenge um, case, actually, not trial, it was a civil hearing, but it, everyone in the courtroom, if they hear the fire alarm, they're trained to go outside, right? If you hear this bell, this sound, you must go out. They're trained what to do. They aren't trained on the law behind it. They aren't trained on legislation. Unlikely that the court secretary or clerk can off the top of his head say that, oh, this fire alarm is operating under you know, the Health and Safety Act provision, you know, um, section five or whatever. I'm just making this part as an example, right? That's not the actual section, but um, section 3B7, you know. It, 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 but in, they, they're trained and they already know if the fire alarm goes, then proceedings will stop and everyone will leave the building. What is the power behind that of recognition and a certain thing happens or occurs? The 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 1688 Bill of Rights for the right to petition and the claim of right 1689 that you can't be imprisoned for petitioning activities and what those rem and in the 1661 Tumultuous Petitioning Act, clearly it states that, you know, petitions to either Houses of Parliament or the King or and remonstrations as well, right? These um these are things which are, are always recognized but but never to be proved to a court or jury. You don't prove it to a jury. You don't Prove it based on evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That is something you've got to do by process of law when you're accused of an offence. When, in the overriding objectives, when it is an overriding, overriding proceedings, overriding a trial, it's an objective of all legal proceedings that they, they shall recognise the rights of the defendant and the defendant. So the rights are meant to be already known, really, just, just the same as if the fire alarm goes off. So it, it, you don't prove it. And the jury, and if you don't prove it, that means that a jury in a court never um, says that you are you. It says that what you've done proves that you broke the law on a certain day at a certain time or didn't break the law 
or were guilty of an offence. But who's guilty of the offence? Well, you say that, you know, I swear that I will, you know, the, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. You know, what you say might not be true, but it, when you say it, you're taken to be you. What if they don't believe that you're you? What happens if you go into a court and under oath you say, yeah, I'm Mr. Johnson Smith and, you know, this is my evidence and testimony. They decide your testimony, whether it's true or not. What if the jury say we don't think that um, th this is the man, this is him? You know, but the, in the courtroom, you get witnesses, and usually the witnesses do say, you know, is this the man that you saw? Yeah, this is the man that I saw, right? So, but but that is, that's actually only getting them to recognise and agree that it's you, but when, when, when the, the judgment is made, it, it's not, you, the, the jury haven't proved that you are you. You swore an oath that you are you. And the prosecutor says that, you know, this is the man who is, you know, this is the resemblance of the man who said was at the scene of the crime and broke the law, right? This is him. Is this him? But when when the jury make that order, it, it's only recognised that it's you and that you have made the oath. They're actually, they're not deciding that you are you. They're deciding that the law was broken and that the person who broke the law should go to prison. And you said that, yeah, it's me. And, if, and other defendants and witnesses have recognised you, but the, the, it, it, it's still only by recognition. It's, they're not actually proving that you are you. They're, they're there to prove that whoever it is who says that, you know, on, on earth, that, you know, I'm here now, this is me, th that's the thing. And that is the thing with right recognition. In in in, the, in here, the, the, how these people aren't proving that. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Secretary, let's just come back to Jose Ibarra, if we can. Senator Hawley, Senator Hawley, you recognize for your questions. Thank you very much. Who proved it? It it wasn't proved by a judgment. It wasn't proved by a judgment. How can he give evidence when they call a witness up? If they have to call a professor into the court to give evidence against you. He, 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 they say, we recognise you, okay? We recognise you. And then he, he puts his oath. I, I don't think that he... Sh I don't think that he shows an ID to the court. The CPS might have looked at his ID so he can prove who he is, but they, th that won't be presented as evidence. It will purely go on that his oath when he goes up to the podium and, and on an oath, right? That's the thing. And this is the thing, really, when when in Magna Carta and, and the whole point of judgment by by peers and consent and what human cry when you're pursuing a offender, if you're going after a criminal or, or if there's been a crime committed, in human cry when they had to shout, you know, they go to the sheriff report a crime. They haven't proved that crime. They go to the sheriff and uh, sheriff and say a crime occurred. Um, you know, give them the evidence, and then everyone has to go and find them or, or help assist to apprehend them. But it, at that point, it's never been proved. All of that goes on the oath that I am a citizen and someone stole something. At that point, you're saying by your oath, it is my oath to the police const uh, sheriff, under my oath, I have been robbed and someone stole something, and this is the truth, right? And then that can, everyone then goes after them. But that that's not, you don't have to prove to a jury <coughs> that you've been robbed beyond reasonable doubt. And then, after they've caught the criminal, then the criminal goes on trial and has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt. When actually someone's committed an offence against you, Everyone pursues them or goes after them purely on oath that it's a true 
statement that you're saying um, this happened and the police fill the forms in, the police investigate it, the offender is proved in court to have broken the law or not. And this is the thing with the political actions and the, the political demonstrations. When you say, you know, we're acting through rebellion and, you know, the climate um, is, is under threat and we need to reduce carbon fuels and we want the government to change the law and then we're pursuing this... Um, case to the government to get it done and we need to get more people more people's oath to it they're getting people to sign by hand or in the tumultuous act by other means as in like you know raise your hand or give verbal consent maybe on a recording or even you know tick a box in a poll or um you know um this is it so that's the oath that's the agreement to it, or the, the the agreement or consent, like you say. Well, um, you know, I, 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 you know, solemnly do swear that you know, I've been robbed or whatever. Or, but, but you don't have to. It doesn't have to be. They're going to try and prove it. At that point, this is what it seems for rebellion are trying to prove in the climate, right? Now the thing is that that right that's invoked does do something, either. You recognise the right and you apply it or you don't, right? Now, in the Roger Allen case, which Black Belt Barristers has been talking about, they didn't have any rights recognised or applied. And if they did, they didn't voice that because the rights are very clear. It says that in the claim of rights 1689 that for petition, political petitions to government can't be put in prison. It's very clear. But it does suggest that you might be liable to a civil debt. In the 1688 Bill of Rights, it says that all prosecutions against were illegal. So that's criminal offences. That means that you don't have criminal liability. Thomas Erskine May, in the book that Parliament used, says that petitions to government um, do fall under parliamentary privileges. Right? Um, so... And that would be like Article 9 as well in that bill, illegal prosecutions. So now, even if they do something, those rights, they protect you from being prosecuted, so you can't be prosecuted or imprisoned. You would only be prosecuted as imprisoned if you if you'd committed otherwise something that was a criminal offence, if you were subject to criminal liability. Now, what Black Belt Barrister is proposing or is reporting on from um, Judge Christopher Hare's um, or Christopher Hare's um, trial against Roger Hallman party is that they, either they weren't using a right or they never claimed one, therefore none was recognised or even raised to claim in the court and they were just prosecuted as any normal citizen who, who was breaking the, the laws of this public um, order act, or they, they're not allowed to claim those rights under the act, right? Now, that act, the public order act, the new one, I have read it, and, and I'm, Black Belt Barrister read it out, and, and he read the wording out for it, right? And that wording was that, you know, without reasonable excuse. Well, reasonable excuse means that there is some a matter that can be raised, or not just excuse, you might have an enactment or, or a right, okay? It, the, the, the Public Order Act 2023 that Pretty Patel's pulled out of a back pocket, effectively, is that it's all assuming that you are a normal average citizen going about normal average citizen business, commerce, recreation, or just um, a, a, a average normal day without anything particular or peculiar um, to raise, and you decided that you were going to lock on to something, handcuff yourself to a bench. Like, you're going to play racquetball, Right? Black Belt Barrister is going to play racquetball or squash and he decides to lock himself onto a bench, right? Or, um, you know, um, or, or someone is, you know, um, a rep. A rep is driving down the motorway, pulls into a service station, gets out, um, parks his car across the slip road to the 
service station uh, and handcuffs himself to the steering wheel or to uh, a tree or something or chains himself across the road and he's just a rep. You know what you're doing? Oh, I was just on my way to a rep meeting, you know. Um, you know, you know, why did you chain yourself across the road? Oh, because I wanted to. You know, what? what is your, do you have a reasonable excuse? Um, you know, th this is the thing. That is really how the act is written. Now, they might talk about, they talk about public demonstrations and they talk about public protests, but in the act, the act is not informing you or acknowledging actually any, any definition of the term demonstration or protest, right? That actually, in truth, an enactment is being raised and used in law which has a legal effect, like in the Town and Country Planning Act in Class F through the use of an enactment. The Act does not say that you can't use an enactment with that Act or in actions that are um, in scrutiny under the Act. And really, they can't stop you from using that bill because it always applies when you're doing political actions to Parliament and petitioning. And you you don't have to apply it through the Act. You can claim it and apply it through the criminal procedure rules, which apply to every criminal procedure that is brought to a court. Some acts acknowledge it, but you don't have to. Usually, it's um, acknowledged in wording such as in the Criminal um, Damage Act, um, it shall not be construed as a defence against a charge if you are using the right privilege and interest, because the right isn't to be proved to the jury. You don't prove the right to that. You don't prove the right to the jury, and therefore you don't need a plea, like the oath of a plea. In fact, when you claim the right or the rights recognised, it's recognised and applied because when you recognise it, you know it to be in effect. You you recognise or know this person to be who they claim they are under oath, right? You recognise the right to be what it is known as, claimed as, or recognised in law. You don't prove it to the jury because no right has to be proved into effect by a jury. It, a right is recognised into force during proceedings and, and even overriding and preventing them so you don't get to a judgment by a jury. My... my um, when I was in civil hearing, really, I was having the right recognised. I didn't really have to prove it, so I don't know why I had to have a skeleton argument for it. A skeleton argument so that it could be recognised, but not really proved, or, 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 or it was no right for the magistrate, didn't, uh, the district judge didn't have the power to, to judge. Um, because it's not part of judgement. It's not actually part of judgement. Recognising a right is that it is acknowledged into effect, Th during the proceedings, or even be probably before they even start, uh, in, by the writing objectives, it, it, it's never proved. In the criminal procedure rules, you don't prove a right through evidence to a court beyond reasonable doubt. You recognise a right into effect. You don't have to. It, you don't have to prove the right. And that is what is going on with, with this here. It's, it's this. It's literally like this. Senator Hall, Senator Hall, you recognize for your questions. Thank you. For right. He didn't prove it. He didn't have to prove it. Uh, and there was no judgment by, by any of the other senators voting um, that, that, that he, 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 he says that he, he, he is who he is. They recognized who he was. They, they accepted who he was by his claim, by his oath of his word, I am me. Okay, we accept that. And when, when they accept that, that, that they haven't made a judgment with a hammer saying it, it, we make an order that it, it, we agree that, you know, it, you are you. Or neither did the jury. So it, this is it. And that Public Order Act, when it says without reasonable excuse, well, it, the, um, the right, obviously, you know, you can reason with someone... Um, 
that you've got a right and, and, and reason with them that it, it's to be recognised. But but that wasn't done in that case. Um, and in fact, reasonable excuse, In you don't even have to be using a particular right which even has any provisions of law enforcing it or any powers behind it. In that Public Order Act, it says without reasonable excuse, that's quite um, important because it can mean that you could have any excuse um, why you did what you did, which means the jury can take that into account. So even if someone did park their car, um, let's say um, an executive is taking their wife, um, you know, somewhere uh, uh, in the car, you know, on a weekend, he's not even working, you know, and they're on the motorway slip road, and, you know, let's, I know this is like a classic example, but let's say she's giving birth, right, and, she, you know, she breaks waters, and he has to stop the car, um, you know, on the hard shoulder, or even on the slip road or something, and open the door, you know, and, and if she had to get out and lay down, or usually she'd probably be across the back seat, but let's, you know, be imaginative. That is a, you can reason with the jury that you've got an excuse for why, you know, you block the road, you know? Um, what about if th this is conspiracy to cause public nuisance that they got prosecuted from? If, if you're in a Zoom meeting with your wife, you know, and, and you say, you know, oh, you know and if, if she's going to give birth and, and you're planning, oh, shall we call an ambulance or shall we drive there and risk, shall we risk driving to the hospital? What happens if you have the baby on the way? Are you conspiring, um, you know, to, um, you know, that th you might be putting the public at risk on the way there, although maybe that's not the objective. The objective is to get to hospital. Maybe that's a bad example, but still, you know, you're, you're, consp you're, planning, you're making plans. It might, might put the public at risk, but you've got an excuse. The excuse is completely separate. The excuse, which is reasonable, means that you can use... You've got to convince and compel someone that you know um it was you know that that what you did you know it, it was reason able that means that really in law it, it, the law doesn't say what is or is not reasonable it says without a reasonable excuse it means you're able to reason it you know if you're able to reason it that means you're intellectually capable of coming up with or create not creating but articulating or explaining or describing a something which you're able to give reason of um, an excuse and that can be taken into account and um, therefore it's not actually a criminal offence. It's only an offence without a reasonable excuse. You have to be able to reason. All of Extinction Rebellion will say that, you know, the excuse of the climate and so forth is is that. Maybe that's what Hallam was... Maybe what these Extinction Rebellion people and Hallam are doing is trying to have a reasonable excuse for what they did. You know, they're, they're trying to reason the climate. But the thing with that is you're going into the matters which they've actually addressed to the Parliament. You're going into the... Cam political campaign and cause the casework which they've addressed to parliament and he's not actually in the court's remit and that's why her hair didn't want them to go into it but that also can fall under a reasonable excuse but the problem is is that um if they claim the right that's completely different because although a right is a reasonable excuse a right doesn't only have to be, um, you don't have to be able, the right, besides being a reasonable excuse, it's also a illegal, enforceable, overriding intervention and objective. And the problem with without reasonable excuse is you've got to prove to a court that you've got a reasonable excuse or that you're able to reason an excuse that the jury or court as a whole will accept. And that doesn't that actually renders it therefore not an offence in law. 
which means that it's not an offence in the law if you can give good reason to a jury. But if you use a political right into effect, which has got a legal requirement to be recognised, it's a, it's a legal requirement and overriding objective for the jury to recognise the right when you're using it. And if they fail to, or the judge and the prosecutor, and you don't actually have to claim it, if they know or suspect that you're using it right, that then they must recognise it. And this is definitely shown in the uh, Jurat's Oath from the 1800s when it says that any serving juror, jurat, already must uphold and therefore know the rights and privileges of the hundred, right? They must already know the rights and privileges in law. Those jurors were elected into position for a long time. They were serving. So they knew the law like a judge or magistrate knows the law and rights. It wasn't required for the prosecutor to give those rights as evidence or for the defendant's lawyer or solicitor to give those rights as evidence in part of the case, although they could raise them to be recognised. So the jurors should have known those rights anyway, just like they know if the fire alarm goes off, they've got to run outside. Or if someone pukes on the floor, maybe check to see if they need medical attention. It's in that sphere of Applica application it's in that sphere of operation it's not actually in the sphere of operation of um, pro proving it to a jury beyond reasonable doubt because you don't have to prove it to a jury beyond reasonable doubt the jury should really already know what the rights are in law like in the um, jury oath independently from any separate trial, from any particular trial that comes through the court and its evidence, the jurors are meant to know those rights and understand them, okay? So they're able to recognise them, even if the prosecutor or the um, barrister um, raises the matter, or the defendant. So uh, when they're recognised, it, it, they don't have to be proved, when the jury recognise the rights, or the magistrate, or any person in the court... Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Secretary, let's just come back to... Senator Hawley. Senator Hawley, you're recognised for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. That's it. You know, but people don't know these rights. Now, th there's an argument over how far do these rights extend. Well, it would, it would be a start if they recognise them, but they're not. Now, if you want to argue how, how far rights extend or not, what Pretty Patel and the government have been doing is because they don't like them, they're, they're trying to use independent acts of legislation to try and make some kind of control to them. But it, that that's actually, the, the in, in this particular case of political matters, the right is the right not to be judged in a divisional court of, of this jurisdiction by your peers, a jury. And these protest groups which defend our juries, they're going on about the jury's right to decide by their conscience. They've got it wrong. Well, they're right, but that's just for a normal trial. That's like in the William Penn, you know, case, you know, the, the jury in Magna Carta. They, but the thing is, they've already got a consent, an oath to this Extinction Rebellion cause case to Parliament, which is like, if you've been robbed or stolen or assaulted, you go to the sheriff and you say, I've been robbed or assaulted, and then everyone is... Pursuing that, you don't have to prove it beyond reasonable doubt to the sheriff in front of a jury. You, he, he believes you on your oath or recognises that you've been robbed when you inform him, right? And that is where we're at with this right. 
And then all the Extinction Rebellion people are pursuing this cause. Now, the problem is, in modern times, compared to when these laws were made, and you, you can't really change them now because they're embedded into the fabric, and the problem is the, the ministers and, and the um, parliament don't really like it. Because what they've got is they've got members of the public have got the privilege of not being judged by their own peers in a court. But that doesn't necessarily mean to say that their case is, is meant to be heard at Parliament with a committee or possibly in the Supreme Court. I still don't think they can be prosecuted criminally as criminals. From what I gathered with the claim of right is that you're not criminally liable for a case you've brought to the parliament that you're acting in connection with. Like, police usually aren't liable um, for, for pursuing criminals, right? They've got lots of exemptions, but they can break the law as well. But the thing is, the police aren't haven't got parliamentary privilege because they're not bringing a case to the parliament. They're bringing a case to a local court under a local jurisdiction and they're only operating under police law. They're not operating under this privilege. It, it's a higher privilege. Now, what the, the, the key to this and the answer is in the MPs and the House of Lords. Um, and it's to do with this Lord Hanningfield conundrum it, and, you know, did Jeremy Johnson KC do the privileges claim correctly for Hanningfield? Did the original Mag Magna Carta still apply because of the Criminal Law Act didn't really repeal those rights? It's to do with Article 9 of the Bill of Rights and the um, Charter of Liberties 1100 when, you know, barons and lords should stand for their crimes. But, but that was way before the 1688 Bill of Rights has made all prosecutions illegal. The, 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 the 1689 claim of right, from reading that properly, suggests that you're, you're, you're liable to civil actions, and that's similar with ministers, you know, can be liable to civil actions in between parliament sessions or even crimes. But it says in Article 9 in the Bill of Rights that they can't be prosecute, prosecuted, illegal prosecutions, you only get prosecuted if you've committed an offence, uh, for matters that are cognizable, debatable by parliament. That would suggest that if Keir Starmer changes the building and planning laws, and f from as a result of him doing that, it causes anxiety, distress or loss to the public that he can't be prosecuted criminally for causing harassment. But actually, it, it might not mean that you can't sue him, a civil suit, like the whole village, the village has been ruined. Keir Starmer has enabled builders to build in the village and ruined it and take a civil action against him in between parliament sessions. And an and, and extinction rebellion, you know, causing damage to the window. A lot of things are insured now, but th this is actually where I am with it now. It, it's suggesting the claim of right that you might that, that you're liable to um, civil action um, in in the courts. So, like, if people on the motorway had been um, delayed, or all, all those things that Black Belt Barrister was talking about, that, that the judge had said that it caused delays and things like that, that, that people might be able to take civil actions against the protesters, but, but not criminally, criminally liable under the Crown, because they're doing it, they're using the Crown, they're bringing a case through the Crown with their oath, uh, lawfully, but they might be liable under civil actions. And this is also the case where it should have been with Lord Hangfield as well. But it says that barons and lords can be prosecuted by their equals. So, so barons and lords can be prosecuted for things they do, um, do in Parliament, but only by their equals. Because that illegal prosecution is only legal prosecution by the King's bench. Doesn't mean that Keir Starmer, if Keir Starmer changes the law of building and planning... And if we go by Article 9 of the Bill of Rights, he actually could be prosecuted uh, by his equals. Although he's not even a, he's not a baron or lord, though, is he? Kiss Starmer is not a baron or lord. 
So may, maybe the um, MPs can be criminally prosecuted for making or changing laws which cause harassment to people because they're not members of the House of Lords. Then there's another charter for the Privy Council as well, under the, the Scout Act as well, which is another jurisdiction. But So it says barons and lords can only be prosecuted by their equals, which, which means that, you know, it doesn't say that members of Parliament... Um, says that illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench for matters cognisable, debatable only in Parliament. So if it's not a prosecution by the King's Bench, you know, um, you know, does that mean ultimately the King in Parliament? I think if you look at the Act of Indemnity with William Orange, they've got um, this... They pardon a load of people in an act, through an act of law, but all the people who weren't loyal to the king, right? But what they do is they exempt people out of the act. So they give indemnity to a large number of people, except people who are exempted out of the act. This is around the dialogue when they're talking about the 1688 Bill of Rights being put in... What's, this is when they're making it in Parliament. So I think that, you know... They, they were they were doing they were they were putting themselves out on the limb when they said all it says all prosecutions are illegal, you know, um, maybe they thought that you know it's a criminal prosecution and being committed to prison is illegal, but is it can they, if if they're liable to civil actions then you know uh, if they damage anyone's property or anything like that, but not criminally liable, you know, so that's where I am with it now actually, with this old Roger Hallam issue. But a lot of this is way outside of the normal standard process and procedure of barristers and solicitors who are doing normal standard cases because they're, they're not... I don't think that they've been taught at university or needed to question, contemplate, or use critical analysis or thinking, question their own proceedings and analyze each part someone did i think i truly believe that people who enacted it did know and do know they know you don't prove a right you you have it recognized just like you don't prove your identity um you know you turn up for the trial and and you know you, you're committed but they've proved that you know you you, you committed the offense that, that, that you're guilty of the offence, but it's only you because you swore on oath that it's you, you know? When you go in there, you say, I'm me, right, we recognise you, you're the person who the evidence says committed this or the evidence shows that it's you who did it, but, you know, you could send your friend in there who said, you know, you could send your friend into court, right, uh, and they could say that they're you, and then they could say that they did all these actions that you're accused of pretending they are you, and then the person that gets committed to prison might be your friend, right? And, and he, he could be in prison for all this time, um, but it's not you. You know, that's a, a misidentification. But, you know, and, and the whole, it is like, you know, unless you're on one of these databases, this is why they want facial recognition and fingerprinting and archives. So uh, particularly when you've got a lot of immigration coming through now and these illegal immigrants, they don't know, prove who's who or what's what when those people commit crimes, but we're getting, we're suffering from it. But the thing is that you only ever consent to the whole thing because you swear on oath that, you know, you are the person that they're under question, you know, and, and I, I've never, I've never actually, I've never had to prove who I am in a court other than when you go up, you know, um, saying, you know, do you swear the oath to tell the truth, the whole tr truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God, um, you know, I didn't have to, like, prove it, prove it beyond me just saying that. And I think that's the thing with the, with, with, with the, with the guilty plea. Like I said earlier, you don't really, I mean, if you say you're guilty, in a way, they aren't really interested if you're not after that. I mean, if you confess to the crime, the prosecutor doesn't have to prove it on evidence. Uh, well, they've got some 
evidence um, that they submitted to the court to show that, you know, they've got preliminary evidence to, to get it into the court. They don't have to make a case to a jury um, or, or, or the judge. As soon as you say that word, like, oh, I'm pleading guilty, I mean, that's it. You, the, the, there doesn't have to be, um, you, you know, there's no... There isn't actually a peer judgment, is there, of your peers? Um, or, or really an order from the magistrate because, you know, he, he, he just goes into sentencing. So I think it is an oath. This is, this is what um, William Keats is talking about and Edward Fitzgerald, this oath thing. It, 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 it stems from this you know, reporting a crime or report, you know, raising a, a civil claim. It stems from at the point of that. But the, the problem with the courts is they don't like the fact that it's not in there. It removes judgment, really. It removes, it removes criminal liability and the right of a, a jury trial for a criminal charge. But then you could say, well, what about this civil liability that, that it's suggesting in the claim of right? Well, the, the civil hearings had a jury, right? Civil hearings did have a jury, um, you know, who was who money or whatever. But that's, that's not a criminal trial and you won't be sent to prison for that. Um, but the jury might say that, you know, you have to you know, um, compensation or you cause chaos or whatever. But may maybe in that case, uh, uh, they didn't have insurance like we've got now. A lot of these companies are insured to third parties and the money gets paid out by the insurance company, although they've got these premiums to pay and things like that. But what's the point of having insurance? Is there any point having insurance? In a lot of cases, you've got to have it. In a car, they won't let you drive a car without insurance, so you're insured. That means that when you do have an accident, all the money in pavements is going to be sorted out and covered, right? Now the thing is, with the civil liability, if you if you did have if you've got a jury in a civil liability, um, you know they might be supporters of the cause, or they might think that you know it was justifiable and that you don't owe the the, the, the people money or whatever, you know. And and at the end of the day, what I what's just popped into my mind now is. Um, have you ever thought of the concept of insurance for political campaigns, insurance for political causes? You know, what, what is the insurance for a political campaign? Could they get insurance? So if they're ever um, prosecuted civilly, you know, it maybe it covers their legal defence or maybe even covers costs, but maybe no, no one would insure them. Maybe no um, insurer would insure just stop oil under those circumstances because they wouldn't be, um, you know, it would, it would be at a loss all the time. You know, it wouldn't be, it, they're going out of their way, you know, to, to, to do whatever. But, but you know, all these actions and demonstrations or even breaking windows, that that's the thing. But I, I what, so actually now another little concept has popped into my head with it, what's for certain is that, so really the right to petition... And the claim of right that you can't be imprisoned, what they actually are, really, aren't they a form of insurance policy? Aren't they a form of insurance policy, insurance that the government gives people uh, when they're bringing political cases that they're insured from any criminal liability? Isn't that the case? that they're insured from any criminal liability. But they can have civil actions taken against them uh, if they owe civil debts. Now, if that's the case, which I actually... This is what I really... This is the one that I'm going with now from learning more until I find out all the Court of Civil Requests records. And if it's a Court of Civil Request, surely, you know, if there's a civil claim against you, that would fit in more snugly with Courts of Civil Requests for doing petitions and um, civil liability, court of civil requests, consent for petitions, and, and any civil liabilities for them. That would be more fitting and appropriate than, than ending up in the criminal court, wouldn't it? Um, 
maybe Pretty Patel and Keir Starmer, if they'd have had their uh, thinking caps on and not rushed into it and panicked, when I don't think Pretty Patel's qualified to um, make any legislation of England, that um, neither is, you know, um, Cat Smith, you don't qualified really to be in the Petitions Committee, for example. But is that why didn't they make a bill for civil liability? You know, why don't they make a bill of civil liability for political actions, for, for proceedings uh, and um, holding people accountable for damages they've done or getting a jury to debate it? That, not criminal liability. This is the thing when it comes to this government. They lack imagination. They just want to do people, get them in prison, stick them in prison, do them, do them, do them. And this is when they're making all these mistakes, like, you know, even the Queen, you know, in criminal... Law Act, repealing Magna Carta parts, or you, Sadiq Khan, as Sadiq Khan is put an order through as the Mayor of London, he, he's made an order that the congestion charge will be implemented, and that's causing a lot of financial hardships and damages. You know why can't yeah? You know he he should be able to be civil, liable against a civil case against him for for all the damages that have been done. But but he's acted illegally. It should be a judicial review against Sadiq Khan because he broke the law and it's an abusive process, possibly even perverting the course of justice. But he's just swanning around now, um, bravado, that, you know, he can get away with anything when everyone knows that he's broken the law. And Tony Blair. So I actually... I actually do think that we, we can get prosecutions against them from the Supreme Court, f from the the justices in the Supreme Court. I think, I actually, now, now I think Starmer can be prosecuted criminally if he takes those building planning regulations away. I think he can be prosecuted criminally by the Supreme Court if we wanted to prosecute him in the Supreme Court. Um, which, which means that... Um, I can complain about him to the Lady Chief Justice because what I've just learned today, uh, earlier on today is that the Lady Chief Justice can't vote in the House of Lords. Since they did that Constitutional Reform Act, she doesn't. the, the, the Supreme Court judges or, or the law lords don't vote in Parliament in the House of Lords with the other peers. They're, they're, they're only judging the judiciary at the level of, of the lords. And therefore, that basically means that um, people can be prosecuted in the Supreme Court by, by the law lords, particularly people who have got a commission, a, a judicial... The mayor is... I've submitted, I've submitted cases against Sadiq Khan and they just closed them. But I've had an investigation investigated against King Charles um, as a judicial... as. Charles with the authority of the king because it's it's a judicial position, but they've been closing down the Sadiq Khan ones, the Sadiq Khan actions that that I because the Judicial Conduct Investigations Office can take legal proceedings. The Judicial Conduct Investigations Office, if someone's broken the law, are meant to serve justice, um, like the police serve justice, but serve justice on judges or on people in positions. And, and they can do representation to the House of Commons. Actually, I'm absolutely certain now that the Prime Minister can be prosecuted by the Supreme Court under criminal, even for things that he does in Parliament, because it says that illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench, but, but the, the Supreme Court is acting on behalf with the authority of Parliament. The Parliament, isn't it? And, and lords and peers can be judged and fined by their equals. So, the, 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 and I don't know, I don't know what the hell was going on with Lord Hangfield. They, they weren't even on the right page with it. Um, they were all over the place with that. It was messy, sloppy, sloppier than this. This this talk that I'm doing. I mean, you know, wouldn't the Crown Prosecution Service prosecuting him in, in in a normal court? Then they say that he can't be prosecuted in that court just because of this prosecution uh, might go into matters of parliament. That was a really peculiar and odd way of claiming parliamentary privilege, for sure. Um, just because um, he pleaded guilty, uh, sorry, he pleaded not guilty, and the questioning would have gone into parliament matters, 
when if he'd have pleaded if he'd have pleaded guilty, then they wouldn't have gone into those matters. But it doesn't matter what, what he pleaded because parliamentary privilege is to do with um his person. And and and, and really, you know, he's meant to be only prosecuted by other lords and barons through Magna Carta. That's how it's meant to be. And then there's no question about the jurisdiction and, 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 and the whole matter in there because they're meant to have be able to have actions against them in between sessions of parliament, but obviously only at the respective levels of which, depending on if they're a member of the House of Lords or not. I, I, it, it, it's definitely clear in that claim of right, 1689, it does say civil liability, um, In in a way, it's very similar to the police. It's like it's it, it's like the police. You know, we're not going to prosecute the police because they're catching criminals. That's that's the basis of it. The sixteen eighty eight Bill of Rights. We're not going to prosecute police because they're catching criminals, and we're not going to prosecute people who have a political campaign to the government who are pursuing uh, matters of state law or religion. Uh, because you know it, it, we're we're giving them an insurance policy, right? I mean, why would you have an insurance policy? Dangerous people who drive trucks that are dangerous, like right? they've got a special insurance because you know it's high risk. It, 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 doing a political campaign is high risk, you know, because you know people get annoyed, pissed off. Um, they have these civil actions, riots, you know, or um, you know. Um, making a point out of things, causing offence to other people, maybe even people saying that it's noisy or harassing. So there's an insurance policy. The Bill of Rights is an insurance policy that protects from criminal liability and imprisonment. That's for sure. But it, it doesn't. I don't now think that it protects from civil actions, civil liability. But really, we're meant to have, be in front of a jury for that civil liability. And what Priti Patel and um, the government have really done is they've really tried to bring down the hammer with criminal liability. They've they've tried to bring in lots of criminal liability clauses that you can't do. That's a crime. That's all right. Then you, you could do your political, political actions, but you know this, that, and the other are, are now crimes when none of it was crimes because there was no criminal liability. Rather than saying, you know, if you chain yourself to a bench and, you know, an ambulance can't get past, then you're, 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 you're liable, you've got a civil liability to, to the consequences of that. I mean, if they go and do it, that they're using it as a deterrent. But if these people go do these things anyway, you know, um, then you know, at the end of the day, if the ambulance is, you know, stopped or obstructed, then... Um, it's done, isn't it? You don't matter whether you throw them in prison or not. You can't undo it. You know, they did what they did, um, other than trying to deter people. But if you've got civil liability and, and they end up fining them or something like that, the thing with that is I think that the political cam campaign groups would probably end up raising the money through donations to cover the civil liability, which is a little bit like their own little insurance policy because if none of the other insurers... If you could never get such a thing called political campaign insurance because no one would touch you um who would well all the people who support the campaign so that means that the funding and donations then would be payouts to any people who, who were put off or offset although this christopher hair this judge is now talking about you know millions and millions and millions but i when i put stickers out and about which i had a lawful right to do in law for the campaign the councils came back and come up with all this tosh costs of removal, thousands of pounds or whatever, when it was impossible. The area that they said that I'd incurred loads of costs was actually Manchester area where I'd put about eight to ten stickers or something. And the area in West Yorkshire where I'd actually put done the whole place was nowhere near that figure. So there was definitely um, false evidence given, false figures, false numbers by the councils, by the police, by the Crown Prosecutors in um, Man Greater Manchester and, and West Yorkshire for those cases. And and the fact is um, you're protected from... They wanted to prosecute me for a criminal offence, right, and put me in a cell and charge me with crime. 
which is illegal because I'm not criminally liable. And and, and for, for those things, are it's not like the this new Public Order Act. It's all completely fleshed. It's all completely fleshed out and described in great detail with the with the permissions and what actment you can apply and use and and and, and criminal damage. It, it, it's all under defacement anyway. Most of it surface damage anyway. So, I mean, they were completely and totally wrong with my case. You know, completely and totally wrong. Um, you know, if if they wanted to, you know, try and get that money back off me for removal, but it, it's public property. It's not a privately owned. It's not like private property for for a, a, another plaintiff. It's public property that is owned by the taxpayer. That that is ours. And when you're opposing the council and you're using... It, it, the law gives you consent and permission to put notices as you see fit to a, a level to oppose the council itself or the elected councillors or, or the ministers in parliament. That That's the point, that it's not their public domain. It's not their street, just their streets. It, it's our streets, and we've got an entitlement to do it. You see, JC Decor, just because they're a private business, they've got so much money, these advertisers, that they're buying the councils off. They're throwing money at them, and they're saying, oh, we'll have, you know, a JC Decor billboard here, and one in the middle of the pavement here, and one in the street, and one over the motorway. All this money is buying them all these things because they're they're buying it, they're buying the government off. But if we did a lot of those things and say, oh, it's obstruction, it's in the way, it's distracting or whatever, it's dangerous or criminal, when it can't be, be the corporate, the, 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 the elite corporate have bought all the civil space. They've, 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 been, they've paid the council off. They've literally bought offers. They bought the right to do anything that, if we did it, apparently they'd say it was dangerous. You know, and I've, I've, I've fastened banners over motorways and I've always used very um, strong tags that, that, that won't break or snap or, or strong rope or whatever, you know. Um, so, you know, to make sure that it's safe. Even in the act, it says that you're not li liable for, for any danger or harm or damage from, from the things you put in place. And when you actually know what enactment you're using, um, it, 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 you can't be criminally liable. It's, it's not possible under that provision of enactment. It's actually impossible. If you have that, if you use that enactment in the 1688 bill and uh, applying it through the criminal procedure rules, it's not possible to answer in a criminal court, but it is possible to answer a, a, to civil liability. Um, that's where I am with it, with the whole Roger Allen thing. This is a completely different... It, it, it's not even on the same page as Black Belt Barrister. I don't think Black Belt... Even if I had £10,000, I don't think Black Belt Barrister would want to represent this or try to... Because you're not... This is not meant to be proved. You're not meant to prove this. And even if you did go into a court and have to explain it to them, it, it's not classed as proving it to them beyond reasonable doubt in front of a jury. What you're doing is you're attempting to get them to recognise it. You're attempting to teach them it so then they understand it um, and then they know it, um, just like you teach them. It, effectively, it's on the same level as teaching the court, um, you know, where the fire escape is, you know, and, and, and to be honest, you know, like I said in that um, Stone Edge case um, in the High Court, they had, when some alarm went off halfway through, although um, there wasn't even a, an emergency. I don't know if they were testing it or what. Um, so that's where I am with it. I don't know if I've seen any civil liability cases, but that that's the, the only thing that I haven't yet read properly is the Court of Civil Request records to find out about the proceedings. But it, may, it actually, if it is the Court of Civil Request that you get consent through officially... The only offence was not getting consent. But you didn't need to get consent if it was under so many people. Only if it was a very large number of people who were going to be possibly a liability or a risk. Uh, you know, it could be a potential liability or risk. That's why they had to get consent from the jury 
larger part of a grand jury. Now, if they didn't get consent, they could still pursue it, but only with 20 persons, like a small number of people. And if it's over 20 persons, they might have stopped them, but that that's a large... They're, they're being outnumbered by the, 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 the grand jury, aren't they? The, the, the smaller number of petitioners are being outvoted by the grand jury, but through a lawful due process of civil, not criminal liability. The, it was a criminal offence if they didn't get to civil consent. So to pursue it, but only over a certain number of people, right? That makes more sense to me. In fact, it was it was looking at it now, the, the, the Parliament Starmer is... Uh, they would have to concede at the moment that it was a really stupid idea repealing that act in 1986, that tumultuous act, because it really controlled the numbers of people. And I don't know what was going on at that time because they had all the minor strikes and, you know, throwing bricks at um, buses when people were going you know, to work when they were on strike and all that kind of stuff. And they, they replaced it with the right acts and, and all these other... Oh, it might, might have actually been the first public order act, actually, could have even been the first public order act, but they're still not um, officially, you know, they're not, they don't want to figure in too obviously this enactment and rights. But you could be civilly liable, you know, for other persons, I suppose, if you harm them. Um, in a riot, you know, if 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 if, if, if you want a compensation, sometimes you get harmed by a doctor, um people get compensation from surgery that I don't think they prosecute the doctor for. Sometimes a doctor can be prosecuted for bodily um, harm, you know, bodily mutation or whatever. But usually uh, if it's medical in this country and if, um, you know, if, if a doctor is, you know, incompetent or whatever, you usually sue, don't you? You usually get sued. Or well, sometimes, you know, you've done more damage than, you know, the money can never compensate for it. But um, I think, the, so I think, again, the basis, you know, how about all the people who have suffered surgery from certain doctors or medical repressions and they, they claimed money back, but those people never went to prison. You could say that, you know, for Roger Hallam, you know, they're not criminally liable. And a lot of these builders, you know, who, 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 who demolished places and not stuck to planning regulations were never criminally prosecuted. They only had to pay a fine. So, you know, those buildings are never, they're, they're gone now. You know, you can't recover them. They're gone. It's, it's in, in and around the area of law. And I think that's the thing with Black Belt Barrister. He's a criminal lawyer. He does criminal law. And he defends people against a criminal charge. Now, if criminal charge is bad, you know, it's that's the real basis behind if you've got a political opinion under the Extradition Act, that you can't be extradited. Extradition is bad because it was a political matter, political opinions and beliefs. You can't be extradited to another country. It's bad. They've based that on the, the 1688 Bill of Rights right to petition, really, and it included even foreign people, Denzians and um, aliens who are in this country. Because, you know, surely if, you know, um, you can be put through the court system or you can buy property in England um, and do it through courts, you can petition the government. Um, they want to say that people don't. Um, have the right, but it, it, it's you know what about foreign? There are loads of people on Change. dot org um, who, who foreign countries who petition um, this government over you know matters like um, prisoners overseas and, and various other things, or people from their countries they've got in our country to be released and various things. Sometimes they respond. So, I mean, I d you know I don't know how you know. On the level of what Blackwell Barrister's at with his intelligence, which I'm not questioning or doubting his intelligence at all, but he doesn't want to venture into this area of discussion, doesn't want to venture into this area of basis or procedure or proceedings, doesn't want to entertain the idea that just, you know, there is no criminal liability if certain rights are in effect. You know, criminal liability is bad. 
but there could be civil liability through the civil courts, which is different. Th that's where I am with it. But but you know e even the um, e even the um, protesters aren't listening or don't necessarily understand it. But that that's I, I I'm pretty I, I I'm pretty much convinced now, particularly from Erskine, the Erskine May book. Um, uh, what, what, what what if it was a political campaign petition to Parliament? Anyway, if it was civil liability, would the civil liability be straight in at the High Court and or the Supreme Court, or would the claim be to Parliament? Um, would um, would the civil plaintiff to Roger Hallam um, claim, you know, Extinction Rebellion owes, you know, £20,000 or whatever, £100,000 or whatever, to Parliament? And then will Parliament um, be able to make an order that, that they've got to pay them the money? Or, you know, that, that that's, um, you know, put a bill through or something. Well, it's called the bill, isn't it? Giving them the bill, you know. That, it's ironic that it's called the bill, isn't it, you know. Or, or even the Supreme Court. That's uh, that, that's kind of like where I am with it now, it, according to law of England and the rights of England, um, properly understood that that's how I think it's meant to work and fit in with it. Only that the tumultuous petition and act did have a criminal liability, but it's been repealed now. And that criminal liability that you still, if you didn't have more than 20 people, you didn't have any criminal liability at all, only civil. And Oh no, because that that was before. I think that was before the claim of right as well. That was before sixteen eighty nine as well. That was way way before. You had the Magna Carta consent of the peers or of the oath, and all the prosecutions that the king brought, like in the John Beswick and Henry Burton case. I've said this before. The John Beswick and Henry Burton case cases, you know, when they got their ears cut off, that was the king. They, they weren't, they were engaging in matters that the king didn't like, and he was, the crown was bringing, the crown was putting them in prison, the crown was prosecuting them, you know, the, the divisional courts, or, or, or the assizes, or quarter sessions, they, they were going like John Beswick and Henry Burton, as far as I can gather from those cases, they were straight in at the top end. So when those prosecutions, when they were being prosecuted for, for petitioning, things that the king didn't agree with against the church and so forth, it was a lot of churches were actually doing the petitions, like church courts, things like that. Um, um, they actually they were bringing the case or on the oath. They they weren't having those cases against them in an, in, in in the. In the the, the 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 courts they raised them in, or in the lower courts, because it it it, it was all at the top end. It was all in the court of commission and so forth. They were getting the ears cut off and put in prison because the king didn't like it or agree with it. Um, even the otherwise, they they had this magna carta kind of right to petition, right to um, you know remonstration or seek grievance, you know, a petition of right and so forth. That That's how I think it fits in. This this model is correct. It's the right model. It, it's the right model. It, it's correct with the all of the acts. It's correct with all the statutes. It's the correct model with the majority of the legislation when they bother to mention it. It's correct with the procedure rules. It, that, it's the correct model. It is the right model. There is no criminal liability. The, 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 the 1688 Bill of Rights is an insurance policy against criminal liability for uh, political cases uh, of grievance to either as the Parliament or the King. And if any damage is done to anyone's private property and so forth, then they can take civil actions. Um, but really, it, it, it's all figured in so it would have been heard by a jury. Um, 
and they might not have even um, w had the action one, you know, one in their favour. You know, the jury might have said that you know they're not liable to pay the money at the end of the day, but that that's not criminal liability and imprisonment. And I think if you think about it, you know, Extinction Rebellion could, could probably afford to raise money to pay up for all the damages that it's causing. Um, and then at the end of the day, a lot of those places are insured for third party anyway. Um, you're just looking at the inconvenience of it all, which is they're wanting to cause the inconvenience to get people to follow the actions. Um, and, and, you know, what has Christopher Herhair summed it, summed it up as uh, a, a public nuisance or planning to cause public nuisances, you know? Um, so, I, know, I don't know what the Attorney General is going to do about it, you know? I, to be honest, it, it's I actually think that it, it's true... The whole thing about these political actions, there aren't that many people doing them com in respect of the whole nation, percentage-wise. I think that it's a more serious matter about Kestama changing the building and planning regulations and any p potential distress and anxiety, permanent <clears throat> permanent changes to, to people's communities and landscape that they don't want at all, that, that, that's more serious than all of this political campaign issue and i think kest armor is probably likely to do more damage to the country even though he claims that he's doing good benefit to it i think that kest armor is likely to reap more damages to this country um than than all of the campaign groups well than, than any of the campaign groups could dream of i think kest armor is about to unleash armageddon through builders on this country beyond the imagination and capacity that uh, Roger Hallam could ever dream of. And Kestama is going to think that he's not criminally liable for any of those effects on people, not criminally liable for harassment caused, not criminally liable um, for anxiety caused, permanent, you know, um, or or civil, but I actually think that he is in the Supreme Court. See, legal prosecutions by the King's Bench. Now, is that the courts, all of the courts, for matters cognizable debatable in Parliament? Well, surely we could get a bill put through Parliament to prosecute him. It's unlikely to get put through. It's unlikely to get put through if he's a Prime Minister, but maybe you can petition the House of Lords. Maybe if you petition the House of Lords, you might be able to get them to prosecute him in Parliament, um, Sir Keir Starmer, although they probably won't, but if he did start reaping um, unsurmountable Armageddon on this country through literally the gates of hell being unleashed from builders, Balfour Beat Me, Care, Taylor Wimpy, just everywhere, and there was a big petition, maybe with three million signatures, to get him prosecuted... You know, there was 1.5 million signatures to um, stop Tony Blair getting a knighthood. These people are actually above the law, but actually they're not. Um, I, it could be you could convince the House of Lords to prosecute him, Starmer, under the planning. Well, planning, planning. He, he, he's he's planning. It's like like Roger Hallam. You know, it's conspiracy to cause public nuisance, but Starmer's not going to just cause a nuisance. Starmer is going to cause harassment to the nation, um, anxiety to the nation, distress to the nation. He, he, he is he, he's conspiring with Labour at this moment. He's conspiring with the Labour Party, conspiring to cause absolute building Armageddon on the country, which will be great anxiety to a large number of people. If Roger Hallam can be prosecuted and he wasn't a parliamentary privilege for public nuisance and even in a Crown Court, Starmer can be prosecuted by the Supreme Court, by the Lords, for conspiracy to um, cause distress to this country. And and I'd like I'd like to get him prosecuted for it before he even does it. Never mind any civil liability for when he starts doing it, which he can be prosecuted for civil liability. Um,
you know, he, 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 stamina needs to be stopped. Th that's actually more of a pressing issue than all of the protesters, which really should be cleaned up in the civil courts, really. Th a lot of them end up in the high court, but, but still under criminal charges. Like Angela Ditchfield ended up for criminal damage when it's not even, it's defacement. It's not, it can't be criminal damage. That, that, that's the defacement charge, which has got consent. And it was in the High Court. It shouldn't have been criminal liability in the High Court anyway. You know, if, 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 you know, if, if it had been a civil claim against her for, for monies or something like that, Extinction Rebellion would have probably um, paid it off, you know? But it, 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 it's... Anyway. Senator Hall, you're recognized for your questions.